Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics and in this video, well, it seems an opportune time to discuss another way in which Project Fear, as it was called by the Brexiteers at the time, has turned into reality. And yet there are still those who fervently stick to their Brexit guns. And it's this sort of thing and I really want to talk about in this video. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So of all the warnings that were labelled as Project Fear, one oddly specific one was the Nissan plant in Sunderland shutting down and leaving the UK in the event of Brexit. The Leave.eu campaign dismissed this as nonsense. But this week, Nissan have confirmed that their business model would be utterly unsustainable in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Needless to say, Sunderland, which depends upon this industry, voted quite heavily to leave. They have now voted to wreck their own economy. If there's one thing that northern towns and cities should know, especially with a Conservative government, it's then when your major industries fail, you won't get new ones to take their place anytime soon. Those skilled and well-paid jobs will not find another outlet in the area. What does that lead to? Deprivation in that area, the people who can will leave it, and this just adds to the problems, adds to the skills and, and talent drain from that area. We've seen it all before. And leave.eu don't get to say that we're carrying out the wrong type of Brexit. I mean, it could definitely be argued that if we'd had the Norway style deal that they were all espousing before the referendum, then we may not have seen all these car manufacturers remain in the UK. However, it has to be borne in mind, these car manufacturers did all say, or most, the vast majority of them said, that Brexit would be bad for their industry. This was before anyone was even talking about leaving without a deal, as anything as stupid as that. This was when we were all talking about having a nice close arrangement. Even then it was not going to be good for their industry. But obviously, I mean, Nissan are one of the later ones. Nissan have actually been pretty decent in holding on and holding on. Many others, as soon as no deal even came onto the table, went, right, we are off. We're gone. You know, so. And this is the thing, the, you know, Leave.eu, along with all the other duplicitous uh, Brexiteers, all switched from, of course, we're going to have a great deal to demanding a no deal Brexit that has, of course, caused the inward investment to the UK to suffer. And in this latest case, Nissan to announce that it's jumping ship if the UK leaves the EU without a free trade agreement. In fact, the real fear of Brexit for me was always having dumb as hell people removing our sovereign rights as both British and EU citizens. Because make no mistake, we're not just losing EU citizenship rights, but British ones too. Partly because in order for our politicians to avoid looking even dumber than normal, they are going to have to accept lower standards in order to get trade deals. And also partly because there's not going to be any such thing as Britain as a nation. No such thing as British citizenship if the UK breaks up, is there? And a pro-leave member of the audience of what is now the completely misnamed Newsnight on the BBC was this week proudly proclaiming that she knew exactly what she was voting for. Because this is the thing we say about Brexit. We didn't really know what you were voting for. Because how could they? They said they voted for one thing in 2016 and now they insist they're voting for something completely different. But she insisted she knew exactly what she was voting for. But she also said that she doesn't know what's going to happen after Brexit. What? You knew what you were voting for, but you don't know what's going to happen now that the thing you voted for is going to happen. How does that make sense? And that's the, that's the problem. That is, this is the uncomfortable truth, of course. We need everyone in society to engage in a democratic process. I say myself, I want full participation in elections, full participation. It's essential. Without that, you have elitism. You have ultimately autocracy. Everyone has to get involved in the democratic processes of a country. It's utterly essential. But the problem is that the bulk of people in a society, especially in a society like the UK that doesn't even educate its population in the ways of critical thinking, are simply not intellectually capable of deciding on extremely complex issues. 
and Brexit is complex. It's almost too complex for most people. Some people will make, and I'm not, by the way, saying that I'm one of the few people who understands it all. I don't understand it all. That's why I have to refer to experts for certain things. Some people like myself will make an effort to understand what we can. But some people struggle so much or they just can't be bothered to read long, boring documents that they don't feel they can even get started. I see it a lot as a teacher with students. Some students just look at a problem because they can't see the whole thing unfold before them, then they'd rather give up than at least try and get started on a problem. And these aren't just the weak students. This is any student that hasn't learned to develop what's called a growth mindset. They give up too easily. The same behavior will inevitably pass into adulthood if they are never encouraged to push past that restrictive mindset. And this woman on Newsnight exemplified that. She has voted for something that she is certain is a good thing to vote for, an essential thing to vote for indeed, whilst freely admitting that she has no notion whatsoever of what is going to be the consequence as a result of her vote. And she feels neither shame nor even in a conflict in making such a statement. I know what I voted for. I don't know what's going to happen. And this is what made it so easy for Brexiteers to dismiss Remainer concerns about leaving. With people capable of critical thinking, a vague dismissal simply doesn't work. We expect explanations, we expect some evidence, but the majority of people don't need explanations. They were told that Brexit will bring them control or better jobs, whichever they preferred. The opposite of what has actually been delivered in the Brexit van. And some people have seen that we've been given less control fewer jobs and definitely fewer good jobs. And they've also seen the idea of better trade deals for the lies that they are, as nation after nation has told us, they're not even going to engage with us unless we have an agreement with the EU. And they've also told us that whatever deal we do get is not going to be an improvement on what we have as a member of the EU. How could it be? And these people have also seen that the only world leader keen to arrange a new deal with us is the vulture Donald Trump who has said he wants to sell off the NHS and lower our food standards, and he's only going to give us that deal if we also renege on the Good Friday Agreement. Fortunately, this will not actually happen because there's others in the US who said they will block it if we do that. Now, there are a lot of such people that, of course, in the face of this evidence, have changed their minds. And you can see what they have to say if you're on Twitter, after you've followed me. You could follow the at Remainer Now account on Twitter. It's very enlightening. But there are also those people who will never change their mind, whether from a fear of looking foolish for changing their mind or just lacking the intellect to be able to do it. I mean, come to think of it, that could be the same thing. Intelligent people understand the importance of questioning ourselves. You only learn by making mistakes. So mistakes are an opportunity to grow. It's not something that makes you look foolish. It's a chance to improve. As such, People with a good capacity for independent thought will have, by definition, made many mistakes in their lives and not be afraid of facing up to them because that's how you learn. It's the people who never change their minds on anything to watch out for because by never facing up to mistakes, all they're basically saying is they haven't learned a thing in their entire adult lives. You see the same things on comments on this channel. There are some people who support leave who try to engage with reason. Let's not tar all leavers with the same brush here. But the vast majority of those who will just say I'm wrong or I'm lying or even just resort to personal insults as if I give a crap about what some random person on the internet has to say about me. In other words, they present no arguments because they have no arguments. They can't contradict my statements because they haven't researched the things that they think they know about. They can't argue against my point because they don't understand the reasons why they're in favour of Brexit. The Daily Mail told them to do it, so they did it. They voted for more control and better jobs and now say they voted to be poorer and with less global influence because to do otherwise would require thinking and intellectual exercise. And who's got time for that when Love Island's on the telly? And this mess will never be sorted out, come what may. In my lifetime, at any rate, I don't believe it will ever be sorted out. If Remain win through, we will never convince the ardent leavers because of two things. One, Brexit has already permanently knackered our industry. It's already permanently done damage to our economy. That will happen even if we're going to be staying in. And they will blame that on the fact that we didn't leave. 
Never mind that all this damage was done as soon as no deal Brexit was put on the table. And the second thing is, if you don't show these people the actual consequences and make them live through them, then they will never believe it. They will never believe it was going to happen. And if we do go through with Brexit, and it's all seen in all its misplaced glory, then the country will sink further into the mire. The idea that we will see the mess and that enough people will quickly realise what's gone on and get ourselves back on the path to redemption seems fanciful to me. Our country will suffer the consequences, the like of which we'll not recover from for a couple of generations. And that's not just me throwing out time. That's economists saying that. You know, experts. People often point out how unfair it is that Brexit was voted for by older people, the older generation. The elderly voted to remove rights from the young, but won't have to suffer the consequences themselves. But there are people not yet born that will suffer the consequence of Brexit if it happens as adults, because the economy will still be buggered then. Our industry will still be buggered by then. So there is no good outcome to Brexit possible at this point, and there hasn't been for some time. There's just a sliding scale of outcomes, with no deal being the worst possible, and no Brexit, following another referendum of course, being the least worst. But there we go. I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.